when it comes to Monster Hunter, this game truly shines whenever you play 4 player team with your friends. You guys get to pick out roles, who's gonna be the DPS guy, the carry, who's gonna support and who's gonna trap and disable the monster. Once you pick a role, you're gonna invest on the armor skills, focusing on that certain role. But right now in high rank, there's a lot of limitations. It's almost impossible to get all the essential skills needed, right? Right now you can just go full on attack and full on affinity, but you will lack some of the utility skills. Same goes with support. If you go all support, going wide range, recovery up, or maybe mushroom mancer. But with all that, your DPS is gonna suffer. The same goes with the disabler role. If you're using a status effect weapon, then most likely the attack raw of your weapon is not that strong. There's always gonna be a trade-off, right? You just can't have everything. But in this video, I'm gonna show you on another way, on another approach to get the best of both. In this set, in this armor set, I'm gonna have a, a decent attack, high affinity, with three disable skills along with some of the essential skills. All right, let's now go take a peek on what armor set I have. Okay, this is the armor set that I came up with. For the helm, I got the Anjanet Helm S. For the chest, I got the Zenogar Mail S. For the braces, I got the Tigrex Braces S. For the waist, the Skalda Elytra S. And for the feet, the Golden Hakama. And now, for the talisman, you're gonna need a plus two to slugger and at least one level two slot to make this set work. And for the weapon, if you can see, that's an iron devil soul. Now, more on that later. To start off, I wanna build around the skill bludgeoner. So in case you don't know, the bludgeoner skill at level three gives an additional 10% to your attack power if your weapon sharpness gauge is at green or lower. So meaning we're gonna focus on the weapons only with green sharpness. And that's what I'm after with this build. So as you can see with the existing skills and uh, take note, these skills are only the base without any decoration. So I'm gonna show you the complete set once with once I have all the decorations in place so for now let's just gonna look at the skeletal set so for the base set you're gonna get a weakness exploit of level three so which is pretty good and the, and you also get a slugger of level two so you have to keep in mind i have a talisman that has a, a level two slot with the plus two to uh slugger so that gives that gives me a level three with my additional point on my helm then I got a crit boost of two. Then the latent power is just more of a bonus that came up that came with the armor set. And of course, this is the bludgeoner in which I have to focus on. And I'm gonna there's also an extra mind eye skill and focus, which is also helpful for for the hammer user. Now let's go check the weapon I'm using. So for the weapon, I have the Iron Devil Soul uh, hammer. So this one only has green sharpness. If you notice the attack power, the raw damage is pretty is pretty high. I mean, 220, and it has paralysis, which is really rare for uh, a weapon this strong. But of course, the draw the drawback for this is the green sharpness. I know a lot of you are gonna get turned off when you see green sharpness and or or like slots that has like level one slots but for a bludgeoner build this is gold this is gold mine for a uh, high raw damage so all right let's focus okay how did i acquire the hammer it's pretty easy to build just go down to the paralysis tree so in paralysis tree there it is it starts off with the devil masher one so all you need to farm is the monster broad which you can get from the insects and the fulgur bug which you can get from the meow scenarios that has a, a zenogre on the map or just farm zenogre then the next upgrade is the devil masher 2 on which you only need four pieces of fusium ore and 
four pieces of Omniplegia sack in which you can get these from paralysis inflicting monsters so Kezu and the last upgrade the final upgrade you're gonna need three pieces of golden sludge you're gonna get that from Almudron and three pieces of fire cell stone which you can get that from the volcanoes or the caverns and that's it that's all you need because if you're gonna compare this to uh most hammers we have right now at high rank 220 is like pretty high this is like one of the highest damage highest damaging hammer of but of course you're gonna get turned off with the sharpness it only has green but don't worry i'm gonna work around with that so this is i'm gonna show you the set with all the decorations in it and i'm gonna explain you how will how will will work with all the decorations in place this is my final build for my so-called bludgeoning disabler so you're gonna get mainly uh you're gonna get your damage mainly on the the bludgeoner attack boost skill which you can get 10 percent and of course you're gonna crit using the weakness exploit of course you're gonna as a hammer user you're gonna keep hitting the head right so you're gonna crit on that so that's plus 50 percent affinity on that and additional when the latent power uh procs so you get additional 20 percent and of course you're gonna get a damage boost on your critical hits like so the damage will be increased to 35 percent so that's pretty good for a, a dps and a status inflicting hammer so right now i also included of course the the preset slugger tree and i got stamina level three another status effect and of course you're thinking screen sharpness it's gonna bounce right well i made a compromise for that and just added two points i mean an additional point to a mind's eye which gives me uh my attacks not getting deflected anymore then i got an additional point to focus which can help the hammer charging and the other single slash i just you know you could put anything you want so for me i just put one point to affinity sliding a point to flinch free um i couldn't think of anything so i just put a point to ice resistance just to uh, lower the negative and that's basically it now so if you check on the rampage skill it has uh three available skills e either the affinity boost which is 10 percent uh additional 10 percent to affinity the paralysis boost which is a plus six from 17 to 23 and the uh, anti-aquatic which is just you know um better against aquatic monsters which for me is uh not that useful i want my hammer to be all around so in the beginning you're probably gonna think why not pick paralysis boost since you're gonna be a disabler build right yep i did that in the beginning and i tried it out the problem is with paralysis and stun uh, sl slugger level three the monster gets stunned right but after a two hits the status changes i mean he gets paralyzed so i'm not able to maximize the time that the monster is stunned so i want to maximize i want to purposely maximize the stun time of the monster before it getting paralyzed so i did not choose the paralysis boost instead i chose the affinity boost which will make makes more sense you know with my affinity build so with this I get to maximize the monster stun time and by the time he wakes up paralysis kicks in and so if you remember a while ago my hammer was around 220 damage right so plus 10 percent of the bludgeoner attack boost you get an additional 22 so you get 242 then including the power charm and the power talent now you're gonna have 257 attack so that's pretty good right 257 and you get all the essentials for a status inflicting uh attack set uh attack hammer set i mean i have also compared this to an attack level 7 build for hammer and the only difference is 10 points so for attack level 7 
uh, build, you get an, a total attack of 267, which is not far off because Bludgeoner is more of like a, a cheap alternative way of getting an attack boost next to the attack level 7 build. Now let's test it on the dummy. So lower the head and let's see how much damage I can do. Just doing a regular big bang attack. Look at that. Total damage of 1043. Not bad for a 7 hit combo. Here's the sample video of what this build is all about. Here you will see Anjanat getting knocked down for the very first time. Once knocked down, the, that's your window of opportunity right there. Free hits, right? And my final smash missed the last hit. That sucks. And by the time Anjanat regains consciousness, boom, paralysis kicks in. Another round of free hits. And if you're tracking the time, that's like 30 seconds Anjanat is being disabled. That's huge. That's a big help to your team. And this is the main reason why I didn't choose the Paralysis boost for the Rampage skill. If your Paralysis stat is too high, it will conflict with the stun time of the monster and that will result for you in your team not maximizing the downtime of the monster. And that ends my video. I hope you guys liked it and I hope I was able to give you guys ideas on how to work with the Bludgeoner skill. So this is another skill we could just try out and experiment just in case you don't have any of the attack sets or you know, if it doesn't really match the type of build you want to go. This is, this is the one. I mean, this could be an alternative for the attack set. Just go with the low sharpness and go with the bludgeoner skill. That's pretty sweet. And of course, you got the disable stats that supports with it. So I hope you guys like the video, so please uh, leave your comments down below uh, on what you guys think. And uh, if there's like any other builds you guys have, please share it. I would definitely would love to check it out. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe and I got more videos coming soon. I'm planning to upload more like uh, unique builds coming your way and hopefully master rank will be just around the corner all right guys thanks for watching and let's keep grinding for those orbs